And we will now go on to community-led documentation in emergencies. Rita has mentioned a bit about it. Uh, in emergencies or crisis situations, and media engagement around such situations. Yes, over to you, Bobby. Yes, hello, friends. <clears throat> so, uh, just looking at the time. Okay, fine. So, uh, so, friends, this is part of the module four. I hope everyone can hear me, right? Yes, we can. Okay, yeah, all right. So, um, so this is part of the module four of the training manual and uh, page 67. Thanks a lot, Paolo, for uh, mentioning this uh, in the morning. And uh, this is, we should have done this for every session. So friends, this is a very important session. You know, when Shobha was uh, leading the, uh, the whole uh, uh, brainstorming on developing this, I think this was one of the areas where we have uh, ourselves learned a lot from other people too, uh, and how to, what, what to keep in mind when we are, uh, you know, and how to prepare for community-led documentation to gather evidence for media, for legal recourse, for advocacy, for policy change uh, in different situations and contexts around them. Uh, you know, related to gender equality, and there is a range of whole spectrum of uh, of situations you can uh, come up with. And you already know, you all of you, each one of you, uh, are already part of uh, or already have experienced situations uh, of 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 that wide spectrum of um, of uh, of situations where we need to uh, really prop be prepared to document as well as possible to gather evidence. It could be for media, it could be for lawyers, legal recourse, reporting, for advocacy, for policy change, etc. So, and of course, to engage media. So, uh, uh, friends, uh, most important here is that community that uh, we need, as Rita has also pointed out, we should not do harm. So we need to assess all possible risks to all the community members, including all possible risks to your own self, plus who are those who are helping us with on-spot documentation, those who are being documented and affected communities at large. And all what Rita has said right before at, um, in, the, in, in her legacy talk, I will say, because it is such an in-depth and such um, uh, such a comprehensive one on range of very important issues uh, for gender sensitive reporting and uh, not to do more harm. And of course, for what she said yesterday, I think those all those values and important and points will come handy. Also, as you know, we, uh, uh, we should not be using a uh, regular smartphone, which we or phones which we are using because uh, uh, this often these phones are uh, have access to sensitive data like your OneDrive, your uh, Dropbox, etc, or your emails, etc, or any other WhatsApp or other kind of uh, 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 platforms which you might be using to communicate with activists and like minded group. So if there is a risk of confiscation in such a situation, probably it is better to take another kind another phone or if you do not have those resources if there's a problem then at least log out of or delete or remove that sensitive data from your regular phone before going to such a situation for uh, using that device for documentation uh, and uh, the, all these inputs are based upon real life uh, experiences uh, shared by those who uh, who have dealt with uh, reporting documentation in such situations. Um, also, it is not advisable to use a pattern lock as some phones have it, but rather have a strong, better password for to protect your mobile phone. Always remember uh, your mobile device. Uh, if uh, you have a smartphone, uh, is, a, is a potential gateway for uh, people who try to hack or try to, and if it gets confiscated by authorities or to anyone gets lost, then a lot of information is there on your phone. Um, we all, of course, law, many of us use our phones for audio, as audio recorder, video recorder for documentation purposes. So please make sure that batteries are charged up. There is enough memory space. Um, uh, there is enough in, in, internet data of, of what you might be needing for whatever requirement. Just uh, uh, for, for example, if you're live streaming um, or, uh, uh, or other kind of situations where you might need net, if at all, if it is available, of course. Um, 
uh, keep uh, and if it is possible then please keep a power bank with you if the battery runs out you can at least uh, power your phone like i know my phone if it is 100% charged it can run for about 3 hours 2 and a half to 3 hours so uh, so i have this mind you know i know in the background like i can run uh, i can record till 2 2 and a half hours and then i will need battery backup or uh, electrical socket similarly if you turn on gps for higher accuracy on your mobile phone if there is such if it is possible then it will show you exact location or at least a relevant location uh, that is also if it uh, could would help uh, if it is safe uh, 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 to, and doc, then doc, then document who is filming who uh, add information about the person who is filming or consider verbally stating the person's name and providing more information. Here the catch line is if it is safe. Uh, verbally state the date, time, location, as well as keep the date, time stamp and location via GPS if possible, if available, etc. in recording. Uh, all of us might have struggled at some point, uh, you know, where we have old videos and old photos and we are struggling to uh, really identify uh, the exact timeline or uh, for, for, for or dateline for that, for those, uh, uh, you know, photos or videos or documents. So it is always good if you have this. Um, of course, you need to check with your own legal framework experts if it, if this kind of documentation will at all help and what will help uh, to document such a situation. Capture other visual information that verifies date, time, location in the footage. So, so for instance, uh, before writing this, before being part of this manual, you know, like um, I was, I was more, I, I fancy taking more close-up photos with my mobile phone, but now I realize the importance of taking longer shots also wide angle shots too so that more context comes in if we are doing it for evidence if we are doing it for media so it is possible to prove um, where was this uh, particular violation happening in different contexts uh, it could be road it could be street sign landmarks buildings trees other identifiers and again if safe if relevant things might be very different for uh, different people different situations where appropriate and where possible film with intention uh, you know you can you can plan it if possible uh, record event incidents as they happen from the start to the end uh, if it is if it is relevant again but in some situations this is really important record continuously if possible uh, hold your shots steady and for at least 10 seconds move the camera very slowly and avoid unnecessary zooming uh, you can uh, take photographs where possible of course with consent uh, if if relevant uh, multiple shots from different angles so that you can really choose the best ones uh, a very slow 360 degree pan to provide context and show what is happening behind the scene and to ensure the video can be more easily verified um, uh, and again, I repeat, the, all these inputs have come from people who have been documenting in such situations. Uh, wide establishing shots to provide wide angle shots so that more context come in uh, of, of, uh, for, for uh, evidence purposes with time, date and location. Medium shots to establish the location of the evidence in the crime scene and close up for key details and identifying people in the scene. And again, this might be very different for different situations. So for, instance, for example, for gender-based violence uh, such situations, probably we will not like to identify uh, at all. We will, in India, in Indian legal context, we will not like to, we are not allowed to um, uh, share publicly any identifier uh, while documenting that. So, um, uh, of course, this is another very important one. We have to think before we share. So before we upload any video or live stream, we just think about your legal framework, think about uh, all the possible consequences for, for the person who is most affected, most important. We do, we do not have to risk any more harm for that person, consent of that person, etc. Uh, uh, harm to you, harm to other people who are hosting you, supporting you, providing you that information, affected communities. In 2009, I was um, asked to do documentation on mental health. So I was very conscious of, made very conscious by the local hosts that we should be not be, I should not do anything to uh, put people who are hosting me in their homes uh, helping me out, do my work, 
uh, they are they become they come at risk. So these are very important lessons. We don't want to do more harm. Consider first sharing or going to a trusted activist or trusted lawyers. Use it in locally, so you will probably find a better advice. Um, and uh, we all know messaging app which are more secure, like uh, uh, like Signal or Telegram. Uh, that is what I've heard. I am not a tech person, but this is what I've learned that probably these are more uh, preferred. Um, we should save the original fi video file, especially if it is for evidence purposes, without changing the original file name in a safe place and preferably a cloud storage. You can create free accounts of cloud storage. They have come up, up come with limited memory, but you can attach it with different email addresses. So you can, ex uh, you can have several accounts on cloud storage, uh, free cloud storage to save more video files, which are heavier in size. Uh, if there is a resource uh, issue, which most of us always deal with, have two or more backups of that file, just in case if um, there is some corruption, file goes corrupt or something, if it is really sensitive, um, and make a copy of that file when you need to edit, when you need to crop, trim, etc., or, you know, share. Um, I, th the, the, I think I will like, uh, I'll not read it verbatim, there's no need. Uh, but uh, I think, and we need to thank uh, the witness.org for this excellent uh, uh, tips that when we have camera at a protest, we can, uh, that can make us target for police. So we need to uh, wear something which can identify us as a, that we are live streamer. We are live streaming for media so or social media for our newsletter so that police or authorities know that if it is relevant again. Uh, and we can, we should also try anonymizing protesters. And uh, anonymity is important. We can protect their identity. We can, we, for example, by we can film their feet or back or capturing very wide shots so that no one person is identified. Uh, you know, when we make it public, uh, if it is relevant, and there are situations where this may be useful. There are situations where you may actually need to, uh, uh, where, where this may not be very helpful at all. So understand what location details you are sharing with your live stream. That is again uh, an important one. Uh, also, th there are different purposes for doing this. So, for example, if you are doing this for uh, for um, for, uh, for media document like a media, or a, you are a media, then probably you need to describe what is happening. You can recap what is happening, factual, unbiased commentary, if possible, interviews. Uh, engage viewers um, if it is possible. Again, you know this. This is so such a dynamic situation. Uh, but if you are documenting for evidence purposes, that is very different. That is where you will have more different kind of an approach, where you are more documenting, taking wide angle shot, three hundred and sixty degree, not trying uh, trying to hide identities of people. That is a very different. Uh, that could be a very different one. Uh, so um, I will quickly uh, share one more important thing, which. Uh, is in the manual again so so let me see where has oops so uh, in the manual you will you will see this uh, chart and uh, this is again from uh, curtsy or oh this sorry friends uh, there was some problem sharing uh that chart but uh th th there is a chart and it is actually in uh, uh um, you need to turn your manual uh 90 degrees to have a look so just hold on I'm trying because that is a really important one. And, the, and I promise that will be the last boring part here. Oops, okay. So can you all see the chart here or not? Not yet? No. Okay, all right. Can you see the yes. chart now? Yes, yes, we can, yes. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. So uh, this is a quick one. So initial meeting risk analysis. It is, if possible, please do it. If uh, with with lawyers, filmers, 
uh, human right observers. So, uh, what can, what are the roles and responsibilities? And divide it if, if if you have a team. Like who is documenting to gather police evidence, police violence? Who is who is doing interviews? Who is doing specific themes like uh, capturing different kinds of violations which have happened in different situations or different situations? You know, it could be uh, we are talking of a broad range of situations here. We can divide who is filming for journalistic purposes, who will film film for evidentiary purposes, and you you can now imagine why I'm saying so because the whole approach might change for different purposes. Uh, so, for example, who person who is documenting for journalistic purposes may require internet if it is available there, etc. Doing more interviews, giving up uh, commentary. Person who is doing for evidentiary purposes should remain quiet. So that um, more of the uh, audio gets recorded, uh, more of the uh, evidence gets recorded without his or her own voice or commentary that is not required at that most most often. Det then we need to determine how we are communicating, um, like we, whether we are using Telegram, chat. If it is possible, it is good to have that understanding with the core group of activists or media self dist then often some people use self-destructive messages, messages which flash for a few minutes, few seconds, and then they uh, they disappear from those uh, platforms like Telegram or Signal. I think WhatsApp also have that kind of a function, but I'm not much of a tech person. Uh, also, it is always good to have emergency contacts, uh, as you mean, uh, it, and uh, know your route beforehand if possible. Sorry, anyone? Okay. Uh, and establish. Okay. So, uh, sorry for this. Yeah. So, um, uh, and and uh, if we all can agree where we will meet after uh, after that documentation, that is also good. Always remember, uh, we need um, uh, if we are filming, th there are people on the street who may have uh, more uh, in you know who, who could be great help. And uh, so, for example, uh, we can uh, we need to back up. But uh, for example, if we run out of battery, there are people on the street who usually have those functions because they are often work from the street. So it could be roadside vendors, it could be people who like Uber or Ola or motorcycle uh, taxis or moto taxis or any uh, other uh, place where you might find some kind of help. Um, uh, I also found this very interesting that. Uh, like it, this depends upon different contexts. If you are using a judicial proceedings in accordance with the law, lawyers can submit a specific footage raw or raw ones. Uh, so uh, make sure again, don't change the name of the file. Don't change the format of the file. Try to keep it uh, wherever possible, the original ones and make a copy of our original one. And then you can convert it into different formats or, or crop, etc. So make sure you have it uh, safely stored. You try if possible use a free uh, cloud storage so that if something happens to the computer hard drive your data is at least uh, safe uh, this part i've already covered the motor taxis people on back couriers uh, this is about the police station in some cases the video content can be shown there uh, make sure you if possible you are documenting the police station the name of the police officers the or the lawyers who are accompanying them uh, police violence film the action from a safe angle do not interfere this is very very important uh, maintain a distance don't stop recording in such a situation it needs to be done uh, if possible if you if it is done being done for evidentiary purposes and be sure to capture the audio uh, remember to film the wounded and get statements from medical personnel on site so they can give you medical details all with consent especially when it comes to the person who's wounded or affected communities make sure we are not doing more harm than good uh, Again, uh, for police actions or other kind of things, the, the or, or very extreme situations, you will find a lot, a lot more inputs from those who have uh, who have more experience in in doing this. Uh, uh, this is very important in our experience also. Uh, Shobha and I have been doing uh, 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 or different uh, uh, you know activism programs on uh, and involved with several activists here in the locally. Uh, uh, and over the years, we have seen that uh, the local intelligence people will come as uh, uh, as plain clothed people. 
So now to get together intelligence input of what we are doing, who is organizing it, take down, note down the numbers of the people who are key organizers, that is routine. Uh, so this is in our context, but uh, I don't know about you, your individual context. So make sure, uh, just be aware that there could be under undercover cops, there could be a plain clothed people. Um, so uh, uh, it is important uh, to just have have this this is another good input from an, a few people that it is good to make an inventory of all equipment you are carrying to doing emergency situation reporting um and uh, all the uh, of all the gear take a photo of all the things which you are carrying and leave it behind uh, so that in case it is damaged or confiscated by the police you have exact details of the model of the phone number of of all the specific th things i forgot i m e i or some you know there are very specific identifiers of all the devices which we usually carry uh, so which we can uh, which will later on could become uh, very handy uh, so uh, uh, yeah uh, ashoba i think uh, we might not be doing very good on time perhaps uh, so uh, yes we can are i not... have one more yeah please please one? go yeah. ahead or or yes. no go ahead yeah. Oops, okay. Okay. So uh, again, friends, uh, this is in the manual section. It is uh, just reminding everyone that this is module four and, uh, oops. I don't know why uh, I'm a bit struggling here with the, screen sharing so sorry for the interruption no so this is another very important uh, tip uh, sheet from witness.org and i will encourage all of you to go through it and uh, quickly Take you through it. Like in, we need to conceal. This is these are good tips to conceal identities of people while filming. So, uh, for example, we don't have to uh, film uh, faces. So we can film hands, for example, or we can cover their face. We can blur face. One tip which Shubha has been using in CNS is to cover it for, to record them from behind or or from uh, with lot of light in front of them. So the, the, basically this zero identifier, you, it's very difficult to identify things. There's no need to uh, depict faces of uh, people, especially when we are uh, documenting affected community voices. Uh, and again, it is if it is relevant, uh, there could be activists uh, uh, from affected communities who uh, who want to go on record. Um, and there are there we have some in the room as well. So welcome, and uh, you all have inspired me, and that's why I'm sharing this experience. Uh, similarly, this is another good one from fitness.org of Silhout, Silhout F, uh, I don't know whether I'm pronouncing the word right or not, but a Silhout F effect. And uh, here they have, uh, they have again mentioned uh, if there is a strong light behind and the person is sitting in front here. Uh, then probably, and if you use your camera, when I, when I use my camera, so wherever I tap, the focus becomes, uh, focus goes on that part. So it, if you if I tap on the subjects of the person's face, sorry, I don't like the word subject, but of the person's face, then the then the person's face will become it will come in focus, and uh, other things might go out of focus or with less 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 in focus. And if I tap on my camera uh, phone screen on the for example on this window then probably the fo the, fo the, um, the focus on the face will go away and will be more on the uh, behind uh, which is which might be required here for cell out effect the, here is there is another way which they have tried to do there is a wall here there's a strong light here there is a white screen here and chair and camera to record uh, statements and conceal identity um, about camera blur very recently two weeks ago as i said yesterday while documenting uh, one case of uh, one one of our one, one person we know personally who uh, was uh, um, gang raped by a few men uh, the, uh, so while documenting that we had to use this i did not know how to do this so another friend of ours uh, helped us uh, the blur the face uh, for that 
Uh, so this is really, very, really, very important, especially in the context of local laws. But most important is the, the what is the person who's most affected and at risk? What is that person's wish? And that person's wish was to conceal the identity. So we did that. Uh, there's no need to, uh, add, uh, to, to share those kind of details. Uh, about editing software, etc. I will just leave it for you all to read because this is such a big topic and uh, I have more to learn on this than, than you know, come here and uh, uh, um, share things. Yeah, so so that's all, friends, uh, from my side. Um, any any questions, comments, or in interest of time, we can also move ahead. Up to you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Bobby. Thank you for highlighting very important finer points, which we sometimes tend to overlook or omit, especially in crisis and humanitarian situations and emergency situations. Uh, we have a question from Paolo that nowadays it is also easy to fabricate false information or data about someone if they want to tarnish someone's image. Uh, can you provide some tips on this? Yes. Uh, right, Paolo. So this is very much possible. This also happens with the, in social movements and people's movements where false or fabricated evidence goes around. Um, so uh, counter that, uh, to try to uh, you know counter that 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 is the only only thing which I need to which I can say here or try to find flaws in that video uh, if it is possible take it to experts maybe they can expose it that this is uh, digitally morphed or digitally uh, modified uh, evidence and this is actually not real. Uh, 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 try to counter that uh, that false narrative. The, the 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 lie will not uh, lie does not have too uh, too much of a life so so try to try to stick with truth and most likely it will probably um, help I don't know how to best respond to this but if it is a photograph if it is a video if it is a narrative if it is textual text I mean then uh, uh, it, it, the approaches could differ but basically it, it is more important to uh, to counter that. Fake Thank news you. and involvement of trolls is also effective. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely, Edna, right? So true. Uh, uh, fake news is a huge issue here. And uh, there are important credible websites now in India, which have come up, which uh, keep on uh, verifying whether this news is fake or real. And uh, so it is always important to check whether the news is fake or real, if it is very sensitive before sharing it any further. Uh, so very true. Okay. Thank you, Vikta, uh, for sharing you. things. Yeah, mask yes, comment is also good. Sorry, Shubha, go ahead. Yes, yes, no, please go ahead because uh, uh, we can take up some of the questions maybe later on also um, at the end of the of this session. So uh, 